In this episode, we are going to look a little bit about optimizing images, applications you can download, and then also looking at a few different um, ways to embed certain things into the editor on Steemit. Not all embeds work, and some don't work in the way that you would expect. So I'm just going to jump in and show you a few of those right now. This is the normal submit page that you get on Steemit. I'm going to show you three particular sites. So we've got SoundCloud, we've got YouTube, and we've got Vimeo. With um, YouTube and Vimeo, it's quite straightforward. You just copy the URL, bang, done. Here we go again, bang, done. Underneath, you can see it just loads them in. But it's a little bit different with SoundCloud. You can't copy the URL because this is what happens when you do that. It just puts it in as a link. So what you have to do for SoundCloud, you have to click on the share, which goes through to embed, and then you collect the code here. And you'll notice that you can't select the different embed types that SoundCloud has, which is a bit of a shame because I'd really like to use the skinny kind of SoundCloud player that to, to put it at the top of a post while somebody's reading it, but you can't do that. I'm just going to get rid of this because I'm going to show you something else as well. So if I embed that in, you see you get the iframe. And you also see that it's not the full length. So what I've found is that you have, have to have something before it, like some text, and then it sort of scales it out to fit. I really like the skinny one rather than this kind of big embed because it kind of takes over the whole of the, the browser and the post and I'd rather like um, to use some of those different embeds from SoundCloud. But um, what it needs is an update on the front end. If you are a developer, go over to GitHub or go over to utopia.io and submit um, to have those embeds whitelisted on the front end of Steemit, which is called Condenser. So it enables us to use different embeds inside of our text box inside of where we put our markdown markdown i'd really like to be able to use some of those other different embeds from soundcloud those are the three that i wanted to show you there is a bunch of other ones there's probably a list of uh different embeds that you can use somewhere i'm not sure where that is but if you dig around in the condenser git uh, github um, i'm sure you'll find them tools i want to show you this is a free app sometimes i've had an issue uploading an image to steam it where it's just put a blank image and the way we found to get rid of that to stop that problem uh, and why it happens is because you might have used a, an additional third party app to add filters and things on it which kind of messes it up for some reason so what you can do is you can remove all what's called meta information from that image file which gets rid of the problem and enables you to upload that picture as you originally wanted Another tool that I think is really useful is Tiny PNG, and you can also do JPEGs here as well. Shrink down the images that you put up. If you've taken your images straight off your digital camera and dragging and dropping on Steam it, they're still going to be the same big size that you've taken off your camera. This file size is going to be like three or four thousand pixels wide, and the file sizes are probably going to be about three or four, five meg. Um, they take a long time to download on a mobile, so try and trim down and optimize your images before you upload on batch lots of images to say like a gallery post on a blog post. And if you can, shrink them down to 840 pixels wide because when you click on a post on Steemit, for instance, that's the width that you get on the pop-up that comes up where you read the blog post. Another thing I would heartily suggest is get opt image. This is one that I've come across this morning. I really like the idea behind this, that if you only want to do 24 or so images a day, then you can use the free edition or you can buy a full version for nine bucks, which I think is really cool. This does everything that Tiny PNG does, but it does it offline. So maybe if you're traveling on a plane or a train, you've got no connection. This is ideal for getting all your images ready before you uh, get to post, before you get to where you're going, get on the internet and post. Uh, and finally, another one that I've seen this morning, I used to have a great app called Teeny Tokyo. Uh, which I bought in 2015, which the developer seems to have pulled from the App Store. I spent money on it. I think it was like $4.99. I think I've had my money's worth out of it, but I'm still a little bit aggrieved that it only lasted two years and uh, I've got no kind of recourse to be able to get my money back and buy this Lanto one, which looks identical, but a little bit more cuter and sexier than the uh, Tiny Tokyo. But um, this is like $4.99, $5.99. If you're doing a lot of photography, blog heavy stuff, then this is probably a tool to definitely download if you have a Mac. And then another one that I've seen online is one called Image. IX sandbox which I haven't tested these last few actually I've not tested and played with them myself but they the Lanto one looks like it's been well thought out just because of the user interface I tend to go on user interface over everything uh, rather than command line these days but this looks pretty good as well there's a limit of 25 meg on this one to drag and drop or you can actually enter an image URL if it's somewhere on the web and shrink it down using this and uh, you can do some resizing uh, compositing watermarking 
image operation, masking, all kinds of things with this. Hopefully these tools will help you make your video and images a lot more optimized and uh, make it easier for your pipeline, your productivity in sticking up blog posts. I'll see you in the next episode.